A casual stroll is not gonna cut the fat, but I can show you what will. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Grown and Healthy, the channel where we explore self-improvement through movement. Now, can walking burn fat? It sure can. Bodybuilders have used walking as their go-to cardio to burn fat while minimizing muscle loss. Walking has many other benefits, such as mood improvement and cognitive improvements. But in this video, we're going to focus on fat burning. Now, there are many underlying factors as to how much fat you'll burn when you're walking. For instance, what is your weight? Are you obese or somewhat lean? The higher your weight is, the more you'll burn. Now, what is your metabolic rate? Are you a sedentary person or an active person? What is your daily caloric intake and how does it relate to your activity levels? Are you in a surplus or a deficit? A normal walking pace of three miles per hour will burn approximately 100 calories per mile, relatively close to the amount of calories burned while running. And depending on the intensity, you could reach anywhere from 80 to 140 calories per mile. Now, what is the difference between the two? Running covers more distance faster compared to walking. Running is also more exhausting versus walking. You see, running will use your fuel stored in your muscles, glycogen, at a higher rate than when you're walking. This expenditure can affect your muscle mass and would be considered antithetical to your hypertrophy work. While there is always a place for high intensity cardio, it is not something that you can perform every day. While walking is the cornerstone of human movement, and we can do it every day. And while walking does take effort, it is nowhere near as exhausting as running. High intensity activity like running, lifting weights, will demand intense recovery through rest and food. Walking uses fat as the dominant fuel source. And isn't that what we want? And without the high intensity load, allowing you to allocate your energy to more intense activities that will develop your strength, skill, or athletics. If you've been walking for fat loss and haven't seen a difference, you might not be walking long enough to counter your caloric intake for the day. But for most, you aren't walking fast enough. You need to walk as fast as you can without placing a high demand for muscle glycogen. This would be at the limit of your ability to have a conversation while walking. This is much faster than you were thinking. And this is what we term a brisk walk. And it is very hard to perform with a heel strike. You'll see people in the park attempt to reach the speed by overstriding, which causes more harm while never developing the necessary speed. We also see this attempt in the gym. People will raise the incline and speed and hold on to the handles at the same degree of the incline, negating the effect of the inclination. Now, why are they doing this? Because they lack the ability to walk fast and they're limited by their heel strike pattern. That is why I developed four foot walking. This method allows you to reach the highest threshold for fat burning while walking eliminating the attempts at increasing speed through overstriding. And it's also going to incorporate proper hip flexion and glute activation to increase your pace and reduce the impact on your body, therefore less injuries. If you four foot walk on the treadmill, you'll no longer need to hold on to the handles in order to keep up with the pace you'll find it easier to traverse the incline with a much higher speed. The average walking speed is 2.5 to 3 miles an hour. That's about around 120 steps per minute. With four foot walking, you can go from 2 miles to 5 miles per hour, or around 155 steps per minute. According to research from 2018, walking at a fast pace can help to increase your life expectancy. Brisk walking more effectively decreases the risk of all causes of mortality, including cardiovascular disease, when compared to slow walking. The protective effects of brisk walking were greater in older adults, but this increase in speed will also burn more fat. Heel striking has limitations built into the pattern, while forefoot walking has none and can only progress from a walk to a jog, run, and even a sprint. 
as the tempo increases. I want you at home to use a metronome app on your phone and test the highest pace or steps per minute that you can perform a heel strike walk. Then compare that to the fastest steps of your fastest forefoot strike. Even without much practice, with forefoot walking, you'll find it much easier to reach and attain a higher walking cadence. This brisk walking pace is the key to accelerate your fat loss. If you're interested in learning how to forefoot strike when walking, please check these other videos.